Beware, the seven trumpets are about to blast. The trumpets are about to overwhelm the world. His professed followers are shockingly oblivious, while ordinary people have absolutely no clue of what is about to break on them. WLC is compelled to sound the alarm. The trumpet, as an instrument, was used anciently for making important announcements. Yahuwah's holy days were announced with trumpets. Wars were started with trumpets. The sounding of a trumpet was always used as a means to draw the national attention of his people to important current events. It is extremely important today for his professed people not to ignore the trumpets of revelation and more fully understand their nature and timing. Why is WLC obsessed with warning about the imminent blasting of the trumpets? We have no choice but to keep warning about the imminent blasting of the trumpets. The Father has shed his light on our path, helping us understand the timing and purpose of the trumpets. Can we hide his rays of light from his people? Our position is best echoed by Amos the prophet when he declared, The lion hath roared, who will not fear? The master Yahuwah hath spoken, who can but prophesy? Our position is also mirroring the anguish of Jeremiah the prophet when he exclaimed, O oh my soul, my soul, I am pained in my very heart. My heart makes a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because you have heard, O oh my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is plundered. Suddenly my tents are plundered, and my curtains in a moment. Like Jeremiah, we understand what the blasting of the trumpets is going to mean to this world in which we are living. WLC feels obligated to make all those who care to listen understand Yahuwah's purpose for blasting the seven trumpets and to act accordingly. The extent of devastation and loss of life that will hit the world from the blasting of the trumpets is indescribable. Living through the seven trumpets is going to be a most fearful experience, and without his shelter and refuge, it will be total despair and ruin. Here is a vivid description of such a time as described by Prophet Zephaniah. Great day of Yahuwah is near. It is near and hastens quickly. The noise of the day of Yahuwah is bitter. There the mighty men shall cry out. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of devastation and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the fortified cities and against the high towers, I will bring distress upon men, and they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against Yahuwah. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like refuse. This is why we are compelled to sound the alarm to all the inhabitants of the earth, as commanded by Joel the prophet. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of Yahuwah cometh, for it is nigh at hand. If we do not sound the alarm about the trumpets and warn all who would listen, then the blood of the lost will be on our heads. When he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself, but he who takes warning will save his life. What about the widely held view that the trumpets are past events? Most Christians today are led to believe that the trumpets have already been blasted, and thus they brush aside any need for studying them. At WLC, we believe that this is a fatal position to take. 
We vigorously oppose the notion that the trumpets have been fully blasted for the following reason. The whole book of Revelation was given to foretell events that would take place prior to the second coming of our master Yahushua, specifically events that were to take place after the commencement of the time of the end in 1798. This is the year when the prophetic 1260 year period came to its end. In the book of Daniel, we find much information about events leading up to the pivotal year of 1798, while the book of Revelation provides us with many details of what will transpire after 1798. Therefore, given that the trumpets are mentioned in the book of Revelation and not the book of Daniel, it stands to reason the trumpets are events that will take place after 1798. The trumpets are most relevant and purposeful for his people in these last days. What about the view that the trumpets will take place after close of probation and not before? Some of those who believe that the trumpets are future and not past events promote the view that the seven trumpets, like the seven plagues, will take place after the close of probation. They reach this view based on the presence of some similarities in the language used for trumpets and plagues. Accordingly, they view the purpose of each trumpet is to announce the related plague, seven trumpets to announce seven plagues. At WLC, we vigorously oppose this misinterpretation for the following two reasons. 1. Many of the final events are chronologically embedded within the timeline of the trumpets. It is clear from the study of these events that they are testing events for each living soul at the time. If they are testing events, then it is clearly implied that probation has not yet closed. It does not make any sense to assume that Yahuwah will be testing people after close of probation and after the destiny of each living soul has been set forever. 2. The space or number of chapters the narrative of the trumpets occupies in the book of Revelation compels us to conclude that the trumpets will take place before close of probation. There are 22 chapters in Revelation. The first 18 chapters take us to the second coming of Yahushua. The seven trumpets span four chapters from the 8th to the 11th, so it is inconceivable that Father Yahuwah would devote four chapters to events that are post-close of probation when he has set only four chapters to the glorious events post the second coming of Yahushua, chapters 19 to 22. It does not make sense to assume the Father will assign equal importance to events taking place between the close of probation and the second coming, with the momentous events taking place between second coming of Yahushua and final destruction of the wicked after the millennium and all the related events. What about the act of casting down of the censer by the angel in Revelation 8 verse 5, which precedes the blasting of the trumpets and suggests cessation of Yahushua's ministry in the most holy place, i.e. signaling close of probation for the human race just before the blasting of the trumpets? Let us read Revelation 8 verses 2 to 5 to better understand the scene in which the censer is cast to the earth. 2. And I saw the seven angels which stood before Yahuwah, and to them were given seven trumpets. 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. 4. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before Yahuwah out of the angel's hand. 5. And the angel took the censer, and filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth. And there were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. We can easily deduce from verse 2 that this angel was not one of the seven angels to whom were given the seven trumpets. Who then is the other angel that came and stood by the altar of incense? Many have concluded that this other angel is none other than Yahushua. We flatly refuse this conclusion for the following three reasons. 1. This other angel is doing the same task that the 24 elders are described to be doing in Revelation 5 verse 8, where they are described as having vials full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, and which they present before the Lamb. They perfume the prayers of the saints and offer them on the altar of incense. The 24 elders are not portrayed as worthy of worship, 
but are in fact themselves worshipping the Father and the Lamb. Revelation 5 verse 14. Therefore, it is not exalting if we identify the other angel as Yahushua when the task ascribed to him is a task that is also being performed by 24 elders. 2. The second reason why this other angel cannot be Yahushua is the fact that this angel does not provide the incense, but is given to him, and it is clear that the giver is Yahushua, whose meritorious obedience and death are the incense, which, when mixed with the prayers of the saints, makes the prayers very pleasing to Father Yahuwah. 3. The third reason why this other angel is not Yahushua is that angel was never used as one of the different 35 names and titles given to Yahushua in Revelation. If the other angel is not Yahushua, then the casting of the censer by this angel to earth does not mean cessation of Yahushua's ministry in the most holy place and does not therefore signify the close of probation. So what does the casting of the censer to earth signify? The casting of censer signifies that Yahuwah's last wake-up call to humanity just before the close of probation will be fiery and most forceful, as seen in the events that will unfold after the blasting of each of the seven trumpets. His last invitation to the human race needs to be strong. It must arrest the attention of every living soul to heed the warning and repent before probation closes once and for all. It is our sacred duty and the duty of every follower of Yahushua to warn all who care to listen of the calamities that will soon take place in every corner of this world. We cannot hide this truth, nor can we shirk our responsibility of warning. It is the will of Yahuwah that none is taken unaware. Angels from heaven are not going to do that which humans can and must do. Moses and Aaron were given in advance the nature of each plague and the exact time it would appear. They had to announce this to Pharaoh so that there would be no opportunity for him or the Egyptians to complain about not being warned. Today, his people have the same responsibility of warning everyone regarding the imminent blasting of the trumpets. When the plagues began to hit Egypt, the Egyptians accused Moses of bringing these judgments upon them. Likewise, his people will be the ones faithfully raising the alarm and warning the world about the destruction and desolation that will be triggered by the trumpets. They will, in turn, be the ones blamed by the unrighteous for all the destruction that will take place when the trumpets are blasted. They will even be looked upon as the cause of it. Nevertheless, this will not shake us out of our solemn responsibility. Come to the foot of the cross repentant, beloved. The time is short. He is coming quickly. The lion hath roared. Who will not fear? The master Yahuwah hath spoken. Who can but prophesy? Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.